Today I'm painting a picture of my adorable little son sitting on a helicopter. This painting took me just seven hours to complete. Lately I've been experimenting with painting more loose and expressively, and the result is so much faster as well as more fun. So stick around to the end to see the beginning. Hmm? In this video, I'm gonna show you my painting process, but I'm gonna do it backwards and under 10 minutes, really. Yep, I'm deconstructing the painting so you can see how the layers build on top of one another and so that you can use this technique to build your own colorful, expressive portraits too. My palette is extremely simple. I start with yellow, red, and blue, then add browns, white, and black in that order. For brushes, I use big, medium, small, and tiny in that order. Since we're going backwards, we're gonna start here with the very last thing I do, which is adding black with a tiny detail brush. Very few things in nature are actually black. That's why I think that black should be done last and should be confined to the tiny brush because it's the final detail on top of everything. That said, my source image had a lot of black layers in this helicopter, so I do use it quite a bit in the background work here. At this point, I also added army green in here straight from the bottle to color the chair my son is sitting on. There was a lot of green already in the picture, so I didn't have to work very hard in balancing this extra color with the rest of the painting. Just before black, I add white, and this is the point in the painting where it starts to come alive and it gets really exciting. Using a small brush, I'm starting to add highlights. It's here you can most plainly see that I'm maintaining a loose style with my brush strokes. I'm even adding highlights that aren't necessarily there, and I'm letting the brush stroke look like a brush stroke instead of blending it in. I switched to a tiny brush and got really focused here getting the highlights of the face right. Mid-tone details are next. Mid-tones are the middle areas of a painting. They're neither light nor dark, and they make up the majority of any painting. The shadows are made of a mix of blue and brown at this point, which creates a more rich shadow with depth, as opposed to a more one-dimensional swab of black. The highlights are skin tones of various colors, plus a light pink I use to make lighter skin tones glowy and rosy. I'm using a medium and a small brush to really hone in these mid-tone details because once I start adding black and white, it's harder to go back and correct an area that's not right. As a side note here, stick around to the end because I filmed my son seeing the painting finished and you'll love his reaction. Right under these mid-tone details are a few transparent layers of the same colors. These are called mid-tone washes, and they're what tame the crazy colors in my underpainting layer. I'm using a medium brush to do this. I started with a lighter flesh tone. I'm using a warm beige straight from the bottle. To make it transparent, I'm using water to thin out the paint. All these washes will go over the mid to light areas of the skin. Pay attention to the water to paint ratio. If it's too watery, it'll slide down your painting, so add enough paint so that it sits on top of your canvas. You do want the underpainting to still show through though, so if it's too opaque, add more water to your brush. Now add washes of a darker color to the darker areas of your painting, particularly the skin. Just before the mid-tone washes, I spend a lot of time on this previous layer. Here I'm using all three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, and painting in areas of more details using a medium and small brush. I'm not looking at tiny details yet, that comes later. I'm focused on areas of color and especially any important lines like the edge of the face and the hat or the way the shirt lays on the body. I put all my focus on getting those basic lines down and I'm bouncing my eyes constantly from the painting to the reference photos to make sure it's right. About those references, I printed two pictures, one of the whole portrait and one of just the face. I didn't like the expression of the mouth that he had in the picture, so I staged another picture and used that mouth instead. At this point in the painting, I could already see that I was going to struggle with getting the face right since the tilt of the chin is odd. So I printed off my head reference a few times until I got the actual size of the head in my painting. Then I cut it out and used a pen to trace around it onto the canvas. Slowly, I cut off or cut out each defining line of the face and traced it. It looks really weird cutting and tracing a person's face, but these definitive lines give me a great guide. I can then paint in the following layers. Okay, we're finally to the most important layer called the underpainting. Again, I'm limiting myself to only yellow, red, and blue paint, but unlike the previous layer, I'm using them one at a time and only using the medium and large brushes. Let's watch that underpainting process. 
This is a canvas board that I experimented with previously and it made the perfect background to start. I don't like to sketch in pencil beforehand because the, the graphite tends to mix with the paint and it's just boring to me. So I actually start with a yellow. I sketch the biggest shapes and lines using a medium brush. From there, I block in all the areas of light using yellow and a medium or large brush. Next, I look again at my reference photo and make a second pass using red to block in the mid-tone areas. So I'm literally looking at the picture and asking myself, where's the medium spots and painting those in red? And then after I'm finished with the red, I go back and look at the picture again with the filter of where's the darkest spots. And I use a medium to large brush to use blue to paint those ones in. Ooh, I'm good. Seeing this base layer, you might be questioning why? Why in the world would you use all these garish colors in the base underpainting? And the first thing I can tell you is that it's just about style. In the past, I've gone for a more finished look with lots of blending. You can't see any underpainting in these ones because I've purposely covered it up with lots of blending layers. I was simply making a style decision back then. And it's really normal for an artist to want to change things up like I'm doing right now. Second, it's about time. Those older paintings took me months and even years to paint. It was a tad painful and I really didn't enjoy the process of painting those ones. My more recent paintings are what you would call loose in artist terms. They maintain brush strokes instead of blending the colors in and that makes them go faster and a lot more fun for me to paint. And yes, I'm in a Starry Night kick. Third, I have a personal color theory when it comes to painting portraits. So if you look at your hand, it's really not one monotone shade of skin tone, right? You can see the blue and the red veins underneath my skin. Maybe you can see, looking at your hand, you can see the yellow in the highlights or the purple in the crevices. Flesh is very colorful and so is nature. And so when we um, emphasize that through our paintings with the base layer and transparent layers on top, that produces a painting that becomes more alive, expressive, there's more movement, and it's a lot more fun to paint. All right, here's the painting reveal to the only audience that actually matters. What are you gonna go see, buddy? Uh, my painting. Uh, I see my painting. What do you think? Good. Well, see, she's a hot That's right. If you wanna see more painting tutorials, would you leave your questions and comments below? I'd love to see what you're interested in, what you would wanna see next. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.